Remember the sorting program that we did the last week? I am going to repeat the same right now, but I am going to use functions and show you the power of functional approach to programming. If you remember, we sorted a list of numbers based on a technique called the obvious sort. If you know, if you, if you remember what that was, it was find out the minimum most element in the list, append that to a new list and then remove that, remove the minimum from the original list. Append that to a new list, let's say new list x, find out the minimum most element in the given list, let's say l and remove the minimum from the original list l. Alright, this is what we did. I will try to do this right now. On purpose, I will stumble a little. I will do it slightly slowly and then try to tell you the power of functions and try to sort of demonstrate how both time and effort gets reduced if you use functions. Let's go ahead and try to code the obvious sort algorithm. So I will say obvious sort. I'll take L as the input. Okay, so what should I do? Look at the first line. Find out the minimum most element in the list. Fine. How do I do that? How do I find out the minimum most element in the list? You see, I'm thinking I am sort of clueless. All right, as, as, I, as I told you earlier, I, I'm going to take a very, very slow approach to solve this. Okay, so assume you are new to programming and you're thinking aloud like this with me. So how do you sort a list L? You first need to find the minimum most element in L. How do I do that? I will say for I in range length of L. Okay. So if minimum that you have declared already. Okay. Minimum which is the first element in the list. If whatever was the minimum is if L of I is greater than i'm sorry less than you see how much i'm struggling right L less l of i is less than minimum then your minimum will be your l of i right that's what we did right but then at the end of this you will just get the minimum most element as you come out of the for loop so what you should do is you must append that to a new list x let me declare that new list here x equals this new list Okay, and then what? So I am clueless slightly right now. What should I do? I think I removed the element mini from the list L, right? This was the program that we wrote in the in the previous week videos. Okay, let me think what happens. X is an array, empty array. Minimum will be declared as the first element in the list. And then I will use a for loop to find out if there are elements less than the minimum in case I find one then I will call that as the minimum and at the end of this for loop you would have found out the minimum most element in the list and assign that to mini and then I will append that to x and I will remove that element from L. This entire thing should actually be in a loop right it should be in a what loop while loop. Why? I keep doing this until the list becomes empty. You are removing the entries from the list, right? Length of L is not 0. By that I mean it should be 1 or above. Then I keep doing this. Okay, I keep doing this. And as you are removing elements from L, it will go to become empty finally. And then finally you will come out of the loop. And then I will say return L. Hopefully this works. Let's see. Let me say L equals 9023881. Okay, so I need to sort this. Let me say the new, uh, let's say print obvious sort of L. Let's see what this does. It's not printing anything for some reason. Let's see why. Okay. Return L. You see the mistake I did. I should have returned X here because X is the new list. You probably were wondering as I was coding some of you. 
uh, on seeing this mistake you're wondering what is he doing and and that was seen here my stupidity so now yay it sorts the list 15 23 88 1997 and you are now wondering what on earth did you do just now right i the same old program that we did the last time i am uh, just a minute i am using functions to do the same thing what's the big deal in it there is a big deal in it just wait and watch in fact i wrote the entire thing into one function but then look at this i have find out the minimum most element in the list l why can't i write a function for this right so what do i do I, i'll just do i'll just write a function exclusively for this what, what is that what is that for this find out the minimum most element in the list l so let me call that as define min minimum element in the list l okay this should return return a minimum element after finding it so how do you find it you say minimum equals l of the first element and for i in range length of l you say if l of i is less than mini then your minimum will be l of i so the moment you do this you know this function simply gives you the minimum most element in the list okay and now i'll go ahead and write a sorting technique um, so what i'll do is i will make this disappear for you let's not see it okay and now let me write down first part is over append that to a new list remove the minimum from the original list okay so now let me say uh, this is a new sorting technique right so i'll say obvious sort one okay different name as a function okay i input l and i want it sorted so what do i do first i find out the minimum most element in the list l which is mini which is equal to min list you see this is a climax here minimum list l simply puts the minimum most value of l into mini you see as opposed to what i did here okay i had to write a program for it now that's not required you simply put the minimum most element in of the list l into mini and then what i'll do is i will append that mini to a new list x of course this all should be declared here x is so much okay x and and i'll remove the element mini from l that's all over this entire thing should come in a loop you see correct think that's precisely what i was doing initialize x to empty and then find out minimum append that to a new list x and remove that element from the list l keep doing this while your list is not empty okay same program you see how organized we were in our thinking correct and then finally i say return l over i feel this was easier for me to do than the previous sorting technique this was a little garbled here i mean it was a it was a little heavy on the mind you see but this wasn't that heavy on the mind correct so let's see whether it works fine what i'll do is if i say obvious sort this gets executed i'll try to say obvious sort one and i'll see which means it will come here execute this function inside this function there is another function here which it will go and then call okay so this is like you seek the help of your friend all right so in this part you seek the help of this fellow all right that's how it works and here you are calling obvious sort one let's see if it works or not again i did the same mistake you probably are <laughs> thinking how many times will sudarshan keep doing return x uh, instead of return x i type return l so yes i see the answer here right perfect so what is the moral of the story the moral of the story is a big program can be made into bits and pieces and you can solve them slowly isn't this true in your life too where you have a big task to do and you keep procrastinating and a good tip that people give you is break that into a smaller into smaller chunks and then try to solve these chunks independently individually okay that way it becomes easy on your mind you will not procrastinate you you will feel organized and you will get the job done so we rest here with a understanding a very important principle in programming which is functional approach to programming 
also called the modular approach you break your problem into small modules let me just sort of write that down we just learned that breaking our problem into smaller modules and solving them makes it easy on our mind all right so if you were to ask me what is the most important part of a discussion so far i would say it is the ability to break a program onto smaller chunks and that is precisely what you have learned so far please go ahead practice practice and practice try to write all the code that you have seen so far using functions now we'll go ahead and try to use functions to see if the very process of matrix multiplication which was one big task for us very heavy and ordeal um, and very tough on our mind can we simplify that using a functional approach to multiply two matrices we'll see that in the next video